So I'm here to share my experience with uh, Melro Bobcat Repower. Uh, this is old Bessie, my Melro M444. Uh, bought her last summer. She had an own and 25 horse engine, and um, and one day I was using her in the yard, and the engine let go. Um, broke off and separated from the from the oil pan. Um, bolts broke, uh, snapped off in the engine block. Um, she was burning some oil and needed a ring job to begin with. Uh, so so. The engine really wasn't um, wasn't very uh, reliable, uh, so um, Bessie wasn't true to me. She needed a new uh, new engine. She needed a new heart, so I had to do a little work to her and pull out the old and replace with the new. So um, so here's what I did: I removed the 25 horse Onan and um, and I replaced her with a with a Brickenstatten uh, Vanguard 18 horse. Um, this engine is um, available online. Um, there are companies that sm sell small engines. Um, that offer the Vanguard engine for repower. Um, I didn't buy the kit. I got the engine locally on Craigslist. I've um, got a real good deal. It's got about 15 hours on it. Um, and I did the rigging myself. So the purpose of this video is to um, is to share with you my experience and to show you um, the modifications I made um, in order for this to work. I have notes. Um, I'm going to read from my notes, but I'll also, um, at the end of this video, give a close-up of my notes with part numbers for um, um, accessories that were needed for the repower. Um, so, um, first I, uh, I got a, um, a piece of 3 16 sheet metal, um, cut to size and bolted that to the frame. And if you get down here, you can see where that was bolted to the frame. Um, after that, I, um, in order to run the, uh, the jack shaft, I got a hold of a snowmobile secondary clutch. Um, I learned this from Farmer Phil, uh, who also has YouTube videos. Uh, much thanks to Farmer Aww. Phil. Um, and, uh, and, and I removed the clutch mechanism from the uh from the secondary clutch and then um used um bolts to to space it at one at, at an, about an inch and a half from center um so that sets the uh the drive belt at one speed it's a speed that's good for around the yard um i don't need to go faster and it's got enough power to move piles um for for my purposes um for the spacing i used just nuts i just bought a whole bunch of nuts and just added nuts um so it's it's fixed and as you can see uh it's bolted together um, now this snowmobile secondary clutch has a bore um, that is one inch with a 0.25 keyway and that's what I would recommend that's that matches the shaft so I really just had to cut it down to size uh, slide it on the shaft um, and then bolt it on with the uh, with the 3 8 24 um, bolt that holds it into place I added some washers um, it's pretty solid and it and, um, and it drives the belt uh, pretty well. Now, um, in order to get the uh, shaft to the appropriate height, um, I got a hold of some uh, three by three square tubing stock, uh, two pieces, one in the front, you can see one in the rear. I also um, added another piece of sheet metal just, just for extra support. Um, that brought the shaft up to the appropriate height um, to match with the hydraulic pump. Um, and then once everything was slid into place, I uh, MIG welded the um, the tubing stock to to the plate that's bolted to the frame. Um, now, um, as far as powering the hydraulic pump, um, I have over here uh, a Lovejoy type coupling. It's not Lovejoy brand. Um, I got it from. Uh, oh, I'm making a video, sweetheart. Um, this this is a uh, it's a jaw coupling, uh, Lovejoy type. Um, there's a uh, uh, one jaw coupling side, uh, which attaches to the stub shaft adapter, and I have part numbers for everything. It's written down on my notes page. Um, a rubber star in the middle, and then um, another jaw which attaches to the uh, to the hydraulic pump, um, and that powers a hydraulic pump. So we'll turn her over and give her a whirl. And again, um, at the end of this video, I'll give a good long close up of this so that you'll have an idea of what I did with appropriate part numbers. Um, and I encourage anyone to email me. Let me know if you have questions, if you plan on repowering your own skid steer. Um, you know, people often repower these with engines they get at auctions or just find laying around. Um, horizontal shaft engines are, are hard to find cheap if you want one right away. Um, I happen to get a good deal on this brand new one and, um, and it's worked out beautifully.
so far. Um, I'm into the machine probably for about 3700 bucks, which is what you pay for a good run at skid steer. And I know the engine's reliable. I get many years out of it. And um, and of course, as you can see, I've, I've yet to apply the counterweight. I left that off so that you could see um, exactly uh, what I've done in the video. So let my lovely wife hold this. Choke. digging into the pile um, but it, but if you wiggle a bit you can you can bite into some dirt um, at this speed and again um, you know I have a pretty decent sized lot here and I, I wanted to keep it at a speed where it wouldn't take me forever to get from one side to the other so um, so I, I think it's a good compromise um, if I ever wanted the gear down a little bit I could just um, take away some spacings tighten up that sheave and, um, and, and change the ratio um, so I'll offer my notes And you'll have to zoom in on this, but as you can see, the uh, sheave set to one and a half inches, approximately. I mean, I just eyeballed it. That's the engine in the middle. So get a good picture of this if you plan on doing this repower. And then on this side, you can see part numbers um, for the stump shaft, jaw couplings. And that's about it. So again, I, I encourage feedback. Um, if you have questions, um, I'll do what I can to help if you're repowering an old Melro. And uh, thanks for watching. And God bless America. She's a good machine and has many, many years left. <laughs>